the farmers of the future. Sustainable agriculture. Food safety is everybody's business. So come on, can you need to hear this? Plant the corn and reap it. Food in abundance, keep it. You feel harvest your water. Climate smart agriculture, you know that we deal with. You see the animals take care of them. Bull in a pasture, sheep in a pen. Chicken in a cook so you go harvest an egg. Eliminate world hunger. Everybody feed a little food at the end of the day. Belly for your full and pot for your scrape. If you use chemical dispose of it the proper way, nobody for your pollute with water way. Come on, food safety is everybody business. My business, your business, being business, for your business. World food day, everybody business. Food safety is everybody business. Come on out to Ladyville Technical High School on October 18, 2019 and let us celebrate World Food Day. Opening ceremonies begin at 9 a.m. sharp. Come and enjoy the presentations and take a tour of our pristine campus. We invite you to take a look at our aquaponic system, our rice plot, our crops, our livestock. Come on out, ring out the entire family. Let's make it a day. World Food Day 2019 at Ladyville Technical High School. Your business, theme business, PR business, World Food Day, everybody business. Welcome back to Open Your Eyes. And if you're joining us now, we are talking to, we're talking all about World Food Day. Uh, joining us is Mr. Emilio Montero, who is the Food and Nutrition Security Commission Coordinator from the Ministry of Agriculture. And also joining us is Ms. Diane Westby, who is the principal of Ladyville Technical High School, and Mr. Hubert Pasquale, who is the agriculture teacher from Ladyville Technical High School. Uh, good morning. And thanks good for joining morning, us. Mm -hmm. Good morning. So we're talking about World Food Day, <coughs> and this year's theme is Our Actions Are Our Future, Healthy Diets for a Zero Hunger World. Um, we hear terms like you know, zero hunger, and even in the jingle we heard just now, food safety, which may seem self-explanatory, but a lot of people don't really know what they mean. So what are we talking about when we use the terms like z a zero hunger world? A good question, uh, good morning. Uh, every year, World Food Day is um, celebrated under different themes. And this year, well, as, as you're saying, our actions, our future healthy diets for a zero hunger world. Uh, those are themes that are selected by the FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. So they look at the global challenges and issues that we're facing, that the human populations are facing. So. This year, for example, um, diets is a challenge. Even here in our country, uh, we talk about NCDs, non-communicable diseases, obesity, overweight, underweight, malnutrition, undernutrition, and the yeah. terms keep going on and on and on. So uh, the way FAO is looking at, looks at it with other stakeholders is hunger, yeah, in a, in, a, in a way we can say, oh, we want to prevent people from starving or not being hungry. But on the other side, when we talk about food and feeding people, we might think, okay, um, cheeseburger, fried chicken, mm -hmm. rice and beans, without actually looking at the nourishment, the minerals, the vitamins that the body actually needs. So we can reduce Hunger, for example, by just eating a, a bowl of fruits with, with perhaps a, a garnacha and we have a balanced diet right there. And then your body has enough calories for the day. But in, in many cases and situations here in Belize, for example, oh, I, I need a whole big plate of rice and beans, my belly needs to be full and then I won't be hungry again. But we tend to forget actually the key ingredients, minerals, vitamins, and the calories that the body needs to run us for the mm -hmm. day. And, and, and that's where we are. Like for example, um, primary school children, uh, they might want um, what, $5 a tacos, whereas $1 is sufficient enough to feed their needs. Mm -hmm. Where an adult like us, for example, we might need a $5 tacos. So, so in that respect, we're looking at um, the amount of calories which is enough to run us for the day. Yeah, yeah. And clearly the link between agriculture and healthy food is a natural one because we're talking about growing the food that we eat. 
Um, you know, I, I want to I wanna jump off with one of the main things that we hear from people when you talk about eating healthy. And that's that it's expensive. You know, if you want to get in a salad or ingredients for a salad, oh, it costs so much. Rice is cheaper. Can you address that, especially looking at the infrastructure we have for agriculture? Right, that, that, that's, one of the, that's one of the pillars within agriculture where affordability is one of those issues. Yeah. Affordability and accessibility. And one of, that's one of the strategies we are using right now within our ministry is, along with primary schools, promoting school gardens. Mm -hmm. Because we can grow our own food. We can grow our own food and by learning how to grow your own healthy food, it will bring down cost. Mm -hmm. That's not maybe. So I was reflecting on that good question because last yesterday uh, we were invited at BHSA where we celebrated World Food Day um, two years ago. Mm -hmm. So we keep rotating venues, especially in high schools that have um, agriculture programs. Uh -huh. Where's BHSA? BHSA in San Lazaro or in Joab. Okay. And that was one of the... Um, that's a high school of agriculture. Right. Okay. And that was one of the questions asked. And just Tuesday, we had a youth forum related to the team over at um, Ladyville Tech as well. And we asked the students, um, why do you think we're not eating healthy? And that was one of the points brought by the students themselves. Imagine um, third farmers, fourth farmers saying, oh, it's um, unaffordable. It's too expensive. Mm -hmm. Yes. But when you look at it, with one dollar, you can buy one dollar banana, mm -hmm. which is healthy. You can buy um, now in, in, certain, in markets, I mean in plastic bags, they sell you um, a, fruit, a fruit salad with bananas, watermelon, a papaya, melon mm -hmm. for a dollar. Mm -hmm. So this is where I think we, we need to start to get in within Belize. Mm -hmm changing our choices yeah. into a more direct healthy needs yeah. and and um it's about changing a culture though yeah, yeah. so it won't happen overnight that's yeah. that's that's important to realize mm -hmm. but if we start with kindergartens and primary schools and teachers focusing and gearing towards helping students to focus on healthy choices yeah. and avoid I remember coming to school in, 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 in Belize City. I did four years at technical, I mean, two years at technical and two years at UCB at the time. And we would walk to school and we would ride bicycles to school. Mm -hmm. And we didn't complain. So s sedentary lifestyles is yeah. also affecting, affecting our, our, our society. So yes, you can say, we might say, oh, it's unaffordable, but then it's, this, it's at the same time, we can make it affordable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know how much we are focusing in Belize City with um, stakeholders like Social Security Board, the police department, uh, when O.C. Gillette was in the city, our own ministry, Taiwanese funds, so many school gardens and so many investments we have done in primary schools across the city. That's a start. Yeah. And within our ministry, we, we can only do so much. Yeah. Everyone needs to do their own little part as well. And, and in so doing, gradually we start to change our healthy habits. Yeah. And one of the ways you're doing so is by working with schools, as you clearly said. You do back uh, school gardens. Um, is that in all districts? Is it primarily in Belize City? Now, now that we are <clears throat> much more fully collaborating with Ministry of Education, we have now expanded uh, countrywide with school gardens. Mm -hmm. And this is something ongoing. We started with 13 this year. Uh, they are getting some funding to do 14 more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And through, through FAO projects and other um, funding coming in, we are um, expanding fully across the country with school gardens. But what's key also to mention, and, and we're seeing it, just as how we have success stories with school gardens, it's about the leadership of the schools. Principals will want to want it. I mean, we can give you all the school gardens and all the seedlings that you want, but if there won't be nobody to take care of it and look after it, it won't work. And, and we, sadly to say, but we have stories like that where we give 
everything and then one month after mm -hmm. like nothing is happening um, <coughs> well uh, I suppose then it's a good um, time to jump over to yeah. the work that's been being done at Ladyville Technical High School because it seems that um, you've invested um, a lot of resources into developing the agricultural program there so um, maybe we can start with talking about how the program became so developed and why you felt it was important that um, the school should have such a program. Well, good morning. Thank you for having us. Um, first, Ladyville Technical has a population of 497 students and we agriculture is one of the areas that we offer as um, specialization. And so it started out small with some years only five students would sign up to specialize in that area. Um, one of the things we discussed was that we wanted to offer the students other options other than what are available at other institutions and so because we're a technical school we also do construction, electrical uh -huh. and so agriculture is one of those programs too. Um, over the years we have invested by adding more livestock crops um, to the program and the students interest also grew because it's a practical you get to be outside in the field yeah. and doing um, all these stuff we have pigs rabbits chickens so they take care of them um, they have learned how to give the animals their vaccinations and stuff oh. like that so um, because of that then more students started to sign up to specialize in agriculture. So when it was only a small amount of students, they were combined with another class. Um, so we would have like um, four horse agriculture, horses for the hospitality mm -hmm. group. And then when it's time to specialize, you move off into your particular area. Now the agriculture students are on their own because you would have um, a maximum of 33 students in, an, mm -hmm. in the agriculture class. What we also did too was from the students are in second form, you are given the opportunity to be exposed to all the technical areas that we offer. Mm -hmm. So at the end of your second year, you are um, given the opportunity, you fill out your forms, choosing what we refer to it as choice of stream. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to branch off? And so if you sign up for agriculture, then you spend your last two years mm -hmm. um, specializing in agriculture. You do your math, English and stuff just like everybody else, but you get at least nine hours per week um, out in the field mm -hmm. taking care of this. How have the students responded to, because Ladyville is a part of the suburbs. Your, your students are not just from Ladyville. They're from some other villages around and even from the city. city. Yes. So, you know, they're not growing up around farms. How have they responded to learning uh, the practical skills and also the theory of agriculture? Well, I can let Mr. Pasquale speak about that yeah. because um, actually Mr. Pasquale is head of the agribusiness yeah. department. I need to mention that my agriculture teacher is a female oh, nice. and um, for the last 12 years she has had 100% pass in the CXE exams. Wow. Everybody that takes agriculture passes that exam yeah. 12 years consecutively, no interruption. You should be proud of that. We yeah. are, we are. Um, <coughs> good morning, thank you for having us. Yeah. Um, do, do Ladyville is, as you mentioned, part of the suburbs? Well, most of our students come from rural communities. Mm. Um, they come from Mascal, they come from Bomba, Fresh Pond. Okay. So these kids grow around farms. Okay. They come from areas that have huge plots of land. So um, it's nothing new to them. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple of the students from the city, of mm -hmm. course. And um, as they say, train up a child where he should grow, he or she should grow, yeah. and in the end they will not depart from it. So we see these kids, their choice of streaming agriculture, um, they select it, and they work. They enjoy being out yeah. there, the practical, um, the practical aspect. Whenever they go out, I, I am not at school right now, but those guys are right there in the aquaponics area, they're yeah. right there in the field, they're doing their weeding, they're, they're, they're planting, 
you know so um they love it they enjoy doing agriculture right. and um you know since you mentioned you know aquaponics and stuff what are the types of um, activities that students will do when they're involved in because i saw uh, we saw in the visuals um in the video sorry that um that you know it's not only um planting there's also livestock as yeah. well that's um going on so what what type of things all right apart from crops we have the aquaculture section we have two tilapia ponds um mm -hmm. and we also have an aquaponics area we did not choose hydroponics because of the fact that we need to purchase fertilizer and add nitrates and salt so um the aquaponics system is basically aquaculture combined with fish working right um using the effluent from the the fish you know whenever fish um defecate they produce ammonia so that is the, 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 the fertilizer that we use to um, fertilize the crops. Everything is grown solely in water. And, um, these, these two lettuce yeah. that I have here, sorry for that. Um, I took these out this morning from the aquaponic system. As you can see, no soil, it's only, yeah. it's only water. So That's my favorite one to buy, less work. <laughs> yeah, you know? So, um, we produce all the grow beds at waste height, yeah. so students do not need to be out there breaking their box, mm -hmm. um, weeding, and so on and so forth. So. so you were saying you don't do hydroponics, but you're talking a language we don't all know. So oh, what's the right. difference between the hydroponics right. and the aquaponics? The aquaponics is the, the, the growing of um, crop using um, fish and water. It's okay. a symbiotic relationship. Liquid nutrient. Right. Okay. So it, it, it's, actually, it, it's actually a symbiotic relationship. <coughs> it, as a matter of fact, it's an ecosystem. Okay. Um, we have fishes in tanks. Mm -hmm. um, they produce waste material. We, it flows into a filter, a filtration tank. Mm -hmm. um, that's where we have the, the, the bacteria. The bacteria breaks down the, the ammonia into nitrates, passes it over onto the plants. And then um, we have another filter that cleans out the water when, whenever the plants use the nitrate, cleans out the water, and it sends it back to the to the fish tank. The um, hydroponics, however, so that's like, aquaponics. That's what you just explained. Right. The fish help to provide the nutrient for the plants. For the plants, okay. right? And then we have the hydroponics where you have solely water, and you would add um, fertilizers to it. Okay. And that would cycle as well. Yeah. However, one of the the, the, the aquaponics is um, you don't ever have to change the water yeah. right while hydroponics Nature takes care of right itself. right yeah because um, the water is oxygenated whenever it cycles through yeah. the system the hydroponics however you need to change the water and where does that water go it ends up in the environment mm -hmm. so whenever it ends up into the environment then we have um, we can it can lead to eutrophication if you have a pond nearby as a matter of fact the water that we get comes from the river mm -hmm. so um, we take our pump to the river, full of a tank, take it back to school, pump it, in, pump it into a tank and so on. So we have actual fresh water, you know. Well, the hydroponics, you can use the water from the, the um, yeah. vat. Yeah. You can use tap water, add your fertilizers to it, cycle it through. At the end of the cycle, you need to release that water somewhere. So aquaponics is the more sustainable option? Is that what I'm hearing? More sustainable and more environmentally friendly. Okay. And, and tying into what Hubert is saying also, Marlene, is affordability, accessibility, urban gardening, the system they're using in cities, for example, no land, no soil. Mm -hmm. So that would be an excellent option. option that can be used, or yeah. actually is being used in urban areas around the world yeah. to, to grow their own food. How much and space does it take? I mean, you can just use uh, the roof of a house okay. and, and fully equip it and, and, and you should have enough and for yourself. It's not and expensive, so you know. It's not expensive. <coughs> um, ours is big, yeah. but it's not expensive. You can do it. As a matter of fact, you can have a small, <coughs> excuse, sorry, mm -hmm. a small aquaponic system in your house if you want, if you so desire. Um, all you might need is an um, aquarium pump. As long as you have the water circulating, yeah. that's all you need. Yeah. Um, in some places in the world, instead of you, we use tilapia. Um, in some of those more developed countries, they use goldfish. It's only the flow oh, I think need. in Taiwan now in, in their rice in their rice paddies they are now growing tilapia in there. So okay. there you have that symbiotic relationship 
yeah. of working together. Of the plant provides oxygen to the fish, and the fish is providing the nutrients to the plant. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is where we get into also continuing with with the discussion of um, climate smart agriculture. Yeah. Where with all these climate change scenarios and weather mm -hmm. patterns changing and dr droughts, floodings. Here you have a control system right. that you can use and still grow your own food. Yeah. Healthy food. And, and this aquaponics um, structure, is that uh, unique to a few schools in Belize or is it more widespread than? Actually, by we've rotated um, World Food Day throughout the country and i um, extremely, extremely um, surprised that I think the only school that has yeah, an aquaponics system is? Don't, and don't much humble, more, they are, gov they are a government school <laughs> yeah. and, go and government yeah. uh, organizations, as you all know, have limited resources. Mm. And for them to have put this structure in place and have the system in place, kudos to them. So what do you find your students do after they've completed a, a specialization in agriculture? What do they end up doing? What we have observed over the last um, few, or few years, some of them have... Um, gone on to Central Farm. Okay. Uh, I believe in the North Escuela, um, Mexico, Mexico mm -hmm. also have a program. So I know two of our students who, upon graduating from us, they moved to the North to enroll in that program. We have been encouraging more of them to seek out where opportunities um, exist even if it's abroad. Last year one of our Fort Farm students um, had applied for a um, Taiwanese scholarship to go do agriculture mm -hmm. um, but because of some technical difficulties um, he but actually what was said to him was to reapply yeah. this year so we're encouraging him to resubmit his application so so they, they see it as a foundation and they're moving forward specifically in this field that's great news right. yeah mm -hmm. and it started to change the stigma also with this new technology because here we're talking technologies yeah. the stigma of agriculture is hard work you need 50 to 100 acres to yeah. plant all this corn and all this rice or in one acre or i mean we we have we did a, this um, demonstration rice plot for example just 10 by 10 with it that's a 10 by 10. yeah that's Where rice. right that's what you have rice, here and yes. that's what's in and that video okay. here it's about to um it's called the flowering um rice panicle mm -hmm. where perhaps in the next few weeks then then the rice will be there but point i'm trying to make is i told i told the principal and hubert you know what something new an addition as how you're saying the lady bill is in a urban setting uh, many of us don't know how rice is grown mm -hmm. and many of his students would say what is that and it's rice they were oh wow it's rice but i explained to them we can do this plot in central farm our horticulture unit they have they have a, a one 100 by 100 and in that 100 by 100 area there they managed to harvest between 150 to 200 pounds of rice in just that 100 by 100. So I suggested to them, let's do this plot, embark on it, see what it's like to grow rice. Then the next step is for our ministry, continued support and col collaboration with them. We can do the 100 by 100 and they will be able to harvest their own 150 to 200 pounds of rice to feed their cafeteria. Yeah. And make it sustainable yeah. Yeah. and um, since um, the ministry has been assisting um, schools with you know education um, you know these sustainable practices over the years do you find that um, these practices are starting that it's reflected in the overall agriculture um, agricultural sector that um, you know for, for instance you know these that the industries are starting to put into place more sustainable, more um, eco-friendly um, ways of farming in general? Well, with now that we are seeing all these um, different climatic scenarios, I mean, just now, the extended drought, yeah. there, there will be, that will be the only way to go, to embark into other new technologies, because um, government alone, 
our ministry alone cannot do it all. And so everyone will have to start or will need to start to embark on new ways of doing agriculture. Mm -hmm. and, and what do you do with the produce? We usually sell them. As, I mean, let me take a step back. Uh -huh. Because as, as mentioned, we have um, a poultry section. We have yeah. rabbits, we have sheep, we have yeah. pigs, we have fish, we have crops. Um, we are one of the number one hubs for providing eggs to the Ladyville community. As a matter of fact, people all the way from Orange Walk come up to purchase eggs from our what? school. So, um, What's so special about your eggs? Ah, they're fresh. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, not, not only that, they're organic. And um, so, Martin, any of you would like to purchase a crate, you need to go on a waiting <laughs> list because <laughs> we, have a <laughs> yeah, we, we have a Yes, there's we have a long list. It's interesting, um, we joke about it, but my secretary and um, the clerk typist in the business office, they have a calendar and there's a list of people um, on it okay. for eggs. Um, so we have also expanded the poultry section because the demand for the eggs because they're fresh uh -huh. um, is very high. So like maybe if you would call my school right now and ask, can I get a crate of egg or a dozen egg? They will quickly scan their calendar and say, um, sorry, Miss Marlene, we don't have, but can I put you down for Monday? Okay. And then we're sure. So we have, Mr. Pasqual asked that we increase the number of layers. So we have done that yeah. so we can provide more to the community because we supply one of the bakeries in Ladyville with eggs. And as he said, we have two customers that comes all the way from Orange Walk. Yeah. Well, that um, it's that's pretty interesting yeah. because is yeah. um, is um, the part of the program that you teach is do you also speak a little bit about the business side of yeah. farming as well and how to you know support yourself or you know part of um, you know contribute right um, as a part of the agro business department we must um, teach economics mm -hmm. um, and how students can go about not only economics but also um, processing food processing so um you, you need to take these crops and complete a finished product you know you, you can't sell paper all your life and then <laughs> dollar bag yeah. you know makes sense so we teach them how to manufacture um pepper couple jams and um so they're well rounded they have the skills so they can take the raw material and create a finished product as well if they want to just sell peppers then they can but um however they have the opportunity to um create a finished product and put it in on the market so um, we were teaching them to, to actually develop, to be industrious, mm -hmm. you know? What also too in the, because we have the um, poultry section, the students also slaughter chickens. We have a slaughtering area. Mm -hmm. And so at least twice per semester, because remember they still need to be in the classrooms, yeah. um, they come outside for half of the day and they slaughter um, between 50 to 75 chickens for the day. Mm -hmm. we, and then again, we have a market for that. We have our set customers that know if we have chickens, um, sheep, mm -hmm. mutton, um, or pork, mm -hmm. they will come to buy. But for the chickens, usually what the students would do too, in terms of tying it to business, um, they would then season and do barbecue and then the population, the student population buys and it becomes income for the school, which of course goes back into the agriculture, agriculture. section. And, and that's the beauty about being innovative. We need to be innovative. Uh, so they have their own ideas. We select schools with agriculture programs. We come and strengthen what they have. So we can talk agriculture and then say, but um, we need water. So when, when we started visiting, perhaps they weren't aware of it, but right across the fence, I saw a huge pond. Mm -hmm. And I said, Mrs. Wesby, uh, I think you have an excellent source of water. Mm -hmm. And then she started explaining to us that it's from the from the BDF, BDF, BDF right across. Now we know the pond is 18 feet deep. It's a freshwater pond. It never goes dry. We made an irrigation system. We have connected some pipes. Yeah. 
so they should be okay for the next 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, in we asked the... So Knock on wood there, right? <laughs> yeah. The um, commandant of the Belize Defense Force was very instrumental in that. Yeah. When I communicated with him, he agreed um, right away that we could go ahead and so... Um, we attempted our irrigation system before because because our campus is the old military base mm -hmm. we already had reservoirs that holds water mm -hmm. but again because of this drought it went dry we had a pumping station and all of that that yeah. we added to it but now with that additional source of water and having a water tower erected yeah because water of the harvesting is, yeah. is something new also that farmers yeah will will need to do yeah that's, as that's well. trying to be resilient to, to right. climate change right. Right. what I, I mean i'm really fascinated by what you're sharing that you're doing at ladyville tech and I, I guess that's why it's a great opportunity for people to go out on friday and see the school and yes. also learn more about the ministry of agriculture and what you're doing but i'm i'm i'm, I'm wondering a step further you are a technical school um yes, central farm is considered a technical school as well High School of Agriculture in Orange Walk is also technical. But is it time for us to move past separating these types of life skills, learning at least or understanding the basics of agriculture into the regular quote unquote mainstream system? Well, if Especially I, if we're going to be looking forward to the future. If I could comment on that just briefly, I know the Ministry of Education in the national curriculum that they're working on um, is ensuring that the technical subjects are incorporated nice. in schools curriculum mm -hmm. um, because while you have schools like ours that are referred to as a uh, technical schools we try to strike a balance so in every program that is offered at our institution um, there's a science in it because a lot of times people yeah. believe Oh, if you're doing technical, there's no science. I often tell my parents, um, the students who do building construction at our school must do physics. You cannot be an engineer and build a bridge if you don't know physics. Mm -hmm. So they're required to take physics. The electrical students must also do physics. The agriculture students do biology mm -hmm. right. and, and chemistry. Mm -hmm. so, in all, so in our curriculum, we have ensured that we have incorporated the sciences in there because we have to face the reality that in our country and in the region we live in an exam driven um, era and if you don't sit these exams to say you have six or 19 cxc's then it's like you have yep. nothing so we try to ensure that within our curriculum you are covering the um subjects the math the english the science the mm -hmm. social studies but in we also give you additional so while we're talking about agriculture if i may um, our electrical students for example mm -hmm. um, quite a few of them on their last day of completing their ojt experience mm -hmm. normally would get em um, employed mm -hmm. by the um, businesses that allows them to do their practice there. Yeah. The building construction students too are very instrumental in what has been built on our campus. Mm -hmm. um, so they get a lot of practical experience yeah. too. And similarly, the building construction teacher has a track record of um, 12 years of 100% passing CXC. Mm -hmm. Everybody passes the CXC exam. Two years ago, we introduced um, the teacher brought to my desk, can we teach um, computer-aided drawing? He started out with doing it at a laptop with his students just huddled around him to us investing in a lab. And so again, too, um, I was told that I'm supposed to ensure that I mention these things since <laughs> I like to keep quiet about it. Um, we, uh, from my understanding, we are the only school doing computer-aided drawing in the country. Huh? And we have done it two years. This year, June, was our second sitting. Our first sitting, 100%, all of our students passed. Mm -hmm. And for this year, when the results came out in end of August, early September, again, mm -hmm. all the students um, passed that. So. Lots of good things happening. So, so there you see it, Marlene, um, where 
the focus of our culture for us is the aging farmers. Mm -hmm. So we need to start to engage more yeah. the younger yeah. generation into farming. And for us, it's now a, ch a challenge where, like five years ago, um, we would, where, where can we celebrate World Food Day? And we would be thinking where and where. Yeah. Now, we have a list. This year, for, we had a list of eight high schools that wanted to host World Food Day. Mm -hmm. So we had to screen and set a criteria. And there you see why Ladyville Technical was selected to be yeah. this year's host. They have so much things going on. Yeah. And they're doing a lot of things on their own. Our ministry just comes in, strengthens on what they have, and we keep the collaboration going. So what can we expect on Friday at the celebration of World Food Day, which will be at Ladyville Tech? There's an official ceremony that commences at 9. Okay. Um, the Minister Honorable Godwin Hulse is our keynote speaker yeah. and we have other people from the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of um, Education should have a team there. My understanding is that our Minister and Deputy Prime Minister is going to be um, our guest too. And after the ceremony is over, there is a tour of the on the campus of all the exhibits from the different organizations that are setting up and of course the main focus a large section of it is what we have to offer along with um, what ministry of agriculture has added to our program over the last um, month or so, uh -huh. so to, to to add to what mrs wesby is saying new new to this year is one we always look at culture food. Mm. So displays of culture foods. Two, we always look for a local celebrity. So Julian Cho, uh, Mr. Mahong, mm -hmm. or last year was Patrick Jones. Mm -hmm. So we look for celebrities from the district. So this year is one of your colleagues, William Neal, will mm -hmm. be our MC. Also from, still lives in Ladyville, yeah? Yep, mm -hmm. so, so he will be there, there with us. And also uh, tying into the team, with our actions, our future healthy uh -huh. diets for a zero hunger world is in order for changes to start to happen, we also need policies in place. Yeah. At least start with the basic policies. One of those basic policies um, embarked by Ministry of Health and Education is the banning of sugary drinks in schools. Mm. Excess sugar, as we all know, is related yeah. to, to diabetes, for example. But that, that, that needs not just a saying per se, yeah. it also needs that political will. Absolutely. So, so this year, and it, for the past few months, we have been planning around that, is the newly formed, mm -hmm. and it was in the news, as, as you saw it, uh, the newly formed, the Belize chapter of parliamentarians against hunger and malnutrition, yeah. being spearheaded by the Speaker of the House, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Laura. So, uh, so there is this Belize chapter now. We have parliamentarians, both from the opposition, senators, mm -hmm. ministers of government, as part of, of the alliance championing this cause. So now all of a sudden, we needed a logo, mm -hmm. a logo to, to showcase the alliance. So for the past month, we have been planning agriculture, health, education, the committee, that supports her. Mm -hmm. There will be the unveiling of the logo. Oh, nice. So the first prize being given by the Ministry of Education, and, and they sent it, they took care of sending the invitation to schools countrywide is, is $1,000. So 40 entries were submitted, or close to 40, and uh, we have a winner. And we find and that out on Friday. Right, and the unveiling will be done by the Speaker of the House, nice. along with the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Education. They will unveil the logo, announce the winner, and the winner will be there to receive his or her prize. Quite a so lot happening new. on Friday. I have one more question. Are you going to have a farmer's market and will you have eggs available? <laughs> <laughs> when I return back to school, I'm going to tell the ladies, and I know they're watching. Please ensure that they have a, you, at you least a tray of them. These, uh, these, these literal uh, hot eggs that you have. And uh, everybody will come on Friday and want some as well. 
We, um, I'm sure that they're going to be small yeah. amounts of, I know Ministry of Agriculture is bringing some yeah. um, plants to give away to people who mm -hmm. may um, come to visit. In, in our case, we do cycles, like I explained with yeah. the chickens. So now school has opened in um, August. And so we're right at the cycle where slaughtering would start. And um, we brought samples of these. But yeah. in the next couple of weeks, there will be a, a, a point where we could um, start harvesting. And then we package and sell. So we'll remember you when we start. <laughs> <laughs> or just tell me when the farmer's market and I'll come. <laughs> but thank you for coming in and telling us about the great work that you're doing. Uh, at Ladyville Technical High School and of course uh, Ministry of Agriculture for explaining uh, what's happening for World Food Day and what we're working towards. The activity is open tomorrow, right? Yeah, it's open. It's everybody is welcome. Anyone there, who wants there to is, stop in, right? Yep, there is no starts cost. It starts at 9. That's one of the highlights, the official ceremony, 9 to 10. Mm -hmm. And then the display of everything that will be there all right. all right thank you for coming in and best of luck thank you for thank inviting you. us thank well. you for having we're us we're gonna go ahead and take a break when we come back we'll be talking about insurance so stay tuned